Welcome to my Tech Fund to another CD Printer review video. This is FSN V400 and this box is sent to me by the FSN in exchange for the review. Now this is not new printer, I got this box maybe a few months ago and they sent to me so I can document the progress in the speed because I'm currently I'm on my workplace on the food engineering department of Martin University and in my office actually I have the Super Racer, their previous printer and anytime I have some presentation to some students or elementary high school students Always the most popular is the Delta printer with that hypnotic move of three arms. And that's why I'm so happy that I got this printer for the review. This is V400 because there is a big fan club here in Hungary for FSM printers. And they talk a lot of good things about this V400. And they talk a lot of bad things about T1 and S1 printers. And looks like those are not completely finished yet. Anyway, this should be, and maybe this is the last uh, currently good printer from the FS Sun. We'll find out that soon, but uh, let's see some specifications from the website. The maximum speed is 600 millimeters per second. Originally, they imagined 400 millimeters per second. Probably that's how it got its name, V400. But later, many testings from the users and from the FS Sun experienced that it can run on 600 millimeters per second. So this is their official speed. The max build volume is 300 millimeters in diameter and 410 in height. But this is not completely cylindrical. On the top it is some kind of cone because of this moving delta mechanism. The max temperatures on the nozzle 300 degrees Celsius, on the bed 110 degrees Celsius. It has nice 7 inch touchscreen. It runs on the clipper. It was one of the first printers who runs on the clipper and it is silent because S1, T1 they are very loud. The Super Acer is also silent. I hope this one will be too. And compared to the Super Racer, this has nice improvement, it has direct drive extruder and the uh, most annoying was that glass on the Super Racer, so this one has the removable texture pay sheet. The packaging is really good, it even has this protection foil outside. And this was content of the package, so we have this base with texture PI sheet which is removable and this is the top of the printer and between these two we will have this L extrusion with the driving system inside. These are 10 mm thick timing belts with quite strong stepper motors. This is the clipper screen, 7 inch touch screen and then we have this uh, direct drive extruder. These are some LEDs, I'm not sure what is this on the nozzle and it will be holded with these carbon arms which are really light. Then we have some sample filament on the spool, which is also nice. This is the sensor, which is removable, properly magnetic. And then we have some bolts and tools for the assembling. And we have the spool holder and basically that's it. Now this printer requires some assembling, but uh, this is not new printer on the market and uh, there are already so many assembling videos about it. So here actually I want to see how it prints, how we check the dimensional accuracy, print bits of different materials and similar. It's assembled in less than one hour and only three things I don't like compared to the Super Racer. Actually the first one is equal and that's this spool holder. It is the same like on Super Racer and here I replace this with some CD printed ball bearings and it's much smoother. The second thing is the screen. It just takes space on the desk. On the Super Racer it was somewhere here and probably I find some solution to mount the screen on the printer itself so it don't take space on the desk. And the third one is the storage box. Yes, for example, for this uh, sensor or for some tools, we had the storage box here and it was so useful. And here, unfortunately, we don't have it. But actually here we should have more space. It is so hard to get the whole printer in the shot because it is quite tall. Now, tomorrow will be the research night on our university when I present different printers to young students from the high school or from the elementary school. And I know that this printer with its delta mechanism will be the most popular one. I cannot show you the footages from this event, just a few pictures maybe. And after this I will continue my review. I cannot show you footages with all visitors, but as I predicted, the delta was much more popular even compared to the Bamboo Lab. The calibration is a configuration menu and it has only a few simple steps and the only thing we have to do manually is setting the Z offset, you know, with that paper friction method. Now let's print a few things which are prepared by the manufacturer, they are on the USB drive and I will start with the calibration cube. This is a very fast calibration cube, printed approximately 8 minutes. The quality of each surface is really nice, no ghosting or similar problems. Rabbit. It 
It's almost finished in half hours and a little bit strange looking rabbit, but optimized for printing. Really nice surface and I can see X and Y letters and maybe this is some kind of calibration rabbit, but these are not round dimensions. This is quite a long printing and properly it's here to demonstrate the precision, but a real test will be in my own object. because this one is designed with quite big gap. Now it is time to prepare the slicer and to test it with my own G-code. For slicer we have several options. You can use the FSL slicer, in this case you will have all those profiles even for newer printers. If you are familiar with Ultimate Recura, in that case you can use this one and V400 is not new printer and it already exists as a profile in this slicer. And the software I will use is the Orca slicer and the V400 is also included in the profile list. And my first object will be this calibration cube with X, Y, Z shape of the points. Let's start with the dice. I also changed the filament to the grey color because on a white version it was hard to analyze the surface quality. Because of that minimal layer printing time the printing looks slow, but later I print some bigger objects too. The bed already cooled down. The first layer is perfect, also the top surface is good too. Now I can see some ghosting along the y-axis and also a little bit smaller along the x-axis. Let's check the dimensions, I don't have a better caliper here in this lab. This is along the z-axis, x-axis a little bit smaller and this is along the y-axis accurate. Gear bearing and here the accuracy is very important, much more important compared to this one. The first layer is extremely important here, but it looks okay so far. What I'm really missing from this screen is the remaining time. Printing at 80%. We had some students in the lab I couldn't record there, so I had to force it a little bit with my hand, but now it spins perfectly. The next printing is just for fun, this smile owl. I print it often as a small gift to my students or to some guests on university and similar. And this is very simple printing, nothing special to analyze here, these are the side surfaces. Also the first layer looks nice. And now let's check the dimensional accuracy. I have these three objects printed on V400 and these three are printed on Babolab A1. Here you can see a few seconds of the printing, this is the box. D6 dice and this is a cylinder. On my box I measure the outer dimensions, also the inner dimensions and the total height. On this D6 dice the dimension in X, Y and Z direction and on this cylinder I just measure the diameter. I will just show you one dimension, the later I will show you the whole table. This was printed in V400 and in X direction this is uh, 49.76 millimeters. This was printed on A1, 49.86 millimeters. Overall on V400 we've had the average error of 0.45 percentage, on the A1 0.3 percentage, so it is more accurate. But I noticed some difference in print quality, especially on side surfaces. The bottom and top surfaces look very similar, but on side surfaces I can see more ghosting on uh, V400. Not sure can I do the input shaping with the Delta printer, I never tried before. The next printing will be from this Flashforward PTG Pro red filament. These are battery holders, I often print them as a gift and since the battery after the charging may become hot, I don't recommend printing these from the PLA. PTG is the minimum and it handles good this material. It's finished, the bed completely cooled down. Okay, nice printing but I can see a little bit more stringing than normal and I want to check if this is a problem with the filament or with the print settings. Just a regular stringing test and I printed this on both printers on V400 and on Bambolab A1 and I try to use the same speeds and similar retraction settings. Noticeable more stringing on this object printed on V400 compared to the A1 printing but I believe that this is not really the issue of the printer directly but more with the settings. One more printing for this video, this is Flex Medium TPU by Extruder and this will be a real functional printing. 
TPU sticks good to this textured PI sheet even on 35 degrees Celsius. These are jaws for my waist if I want to grab some softer material. The objects are really nice so far, but this is very easy printing, but I will take a closer look at the end. The printing is finished and I cannot see any stringing between two objects or very minimally, but let's try to remove it. It's not easy, but not impossible. Well, actually now I can see a few strings inside the hole, but the part is completely functional. Quick conclusions for the end. I really like this printer. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's not bad. And since the T1 and S1 have so many negative reviews so far, I will not place affiliate link down in the description of this video, proof that you can trust me, just a regular link to their product page. So, as I mentioned, it's not perfect, and I will not repeat all those problems I already mentioned in this video, maybe just a few to mention. I don't like that it don't have quite standard position, this screen takes space on the desk, or it has a little bit more ghosting compared to the similar speed bamboo printer, or I think the biggest issue is that sometimes it scratches the surface. So I try to avoid those infill lines where the lines cross each other in the same layer. But otherwise, it is a very nice printer. I mean, it is always the most popular mechanism when I present my students uh, different printer types. Always the most popular will be the Delta printer. About the T1 and S1 review. They asked me for the review, but uh, since it has already quite a lot of negative reviews, they are careful and they try to, how to express myself carefully, they try to give me some directions for the video, what should I include there. And I don't want to do this, so if I don't have a free hands, I don't want to accept this video. If they will change their approach, in that case, maybe I will accept some. And uh, I'm asking you, what would you like me to test in that video? I mean, there are already so many reviews. Maybe there is no sense to test these printers until they don't have, I don't know, version 2 or something like that. About S1, for example, theoretically it is ready for many technical filaments. It is able to heat up the nozzle to 350 degrees Celsius. And I wouldn't mind if I cannot print on 1200 mm per second speed, but it must be reliable printing with carbon fiber filaments. I mean, I don't want to accept this printer for the review if it is not able to print continuously with carbon fiber filaments. We have a lot of PPA, PPS, new filament types now, and they require these high temperatures. And not even Bebelab X1 carbon can print above 300 degrees Celsius, so they could use this opportunity, but it must be able to print with carbon fiber filaments continuously. It has some aluminum block with the CHT channels above the nozzle to reach this high flow, but it will wear out too quickly. So I'm waiting your help here a little bit. Anyway, thank you for watching and happy printing!